here we go. Cardiologist blows whistle. All hospital COVID deaths were murdered. A world-renowned cardiologist has blown the whistle in an explosive testimony to expose the true cause of patients whose deaths were listed as COVID. Dr. Dr. Peter McCullough sat, testified before the, no, the novel coronavirus Southwestern Intergovernmental Committee. Who the hell is that? They just make these things up. Uh, they really okay. do. About the staggering numbers of people who supposedly died from COVID <clears throat> in hospitals during and after the pandemic. Uh, McCulloch sent shockwaves through the hearing when he testified that no patients were killed by the virus. Instead, McCulloch was told the panel uh, told the panel that every single patient who died, who was listed as COVID, was actually murdered by the hospital where they were treated. We know they were doing this. Well, first of all, we know they were doing this. Well, one of the things that killed a lot of people is they overpressured the, uh, the ventilators. Stuff, the ventilators. Yes. Yeah. They also put them on remdesivir, which was known to cause kidney failure. Yes. Now, I have talked to people, including a guy in Texas, where they tried to kill his sister and they managed to get her out of there at the last second. He's done a lot of research into the subject. I haven't talked to him in a couple of months now because he's doing other stuff and I'm doing other stuff. But initially, when this all first came out, he did a ton of research. The hospitals were threatening people to isolate their family member and basically kidnap their family member under color of law if the family didn't allow the hospital to put them on remdesivir and these ventilators. Now, why were the hospitals so hot to do this? Because they got 30 because Gs. Because they got 40 Gs. 40 Gs per 40 per... Gs per body. Wow. The hospitals were getting $40,000. There was a bounty on your head at every hospital participating in these programs. Now, now let, let's let's be honest here. Do I think people died from this? Yes. I, I think legitimately people died from it. I talked to uh, first responders who uh, worked around New York City. Okay, I'm going to pull you up by the short hair. H hang on, hang on. Let, let, hang on. No, let me finish. I'm getting angry. I know. I served with a couple of these guys. No, they're they're stand-up dudes. Yep. And they went on many, many calls for this yes. happy hypoxia, where literally they're not getting enough oxygen because there was something going on inside their air sacs. So do, I think some people died from this. I, I do. Do I think as many people that they're claiming died of it? Oh, hell no. No, right now they're padding the numbers to try to just justify their decisions and their actions. All right, go ahead. Go off. I, I want to see this. God damn it. <laughs> so human beings are expendable. Of We're course. basically a bag of water and bones. We die. Every year, thousands of people die from the flu. Are there articles about it in the newspaper? Par barely. Well, for the Do they panic over this? Get out of my way. I am I'm doing sorry. this right sorry. now. Sorry. Do people die? Thousands of people die from the flu every year. Thousands. We never hear about it in the newspapers when that's happening. This comes along. Suddenly, it is the biggest crisis the world has ever faced. The bubonic plague wiped out a third of Europe in the 1300s. A Pass. third of Europe. Wiped it out, gone. Half. Was it half? Half. Half. There you have it. Okay. So we didn't lose half the population to this stupid whatever the hell it was. Nope. Yes, people were dying. Absolutely people were dying. People die every year from flu, pneumonia. Pneumonia kills thousands. Sometimes people die from nothing. Sometimes people just fucking die. Man. It's your time. The God Some is like, just... you're done. I'm a firm believer that when you're born, St. Pete stamps a date on your ass, and that's exactly the amount of time that you have. Correct. Okay. I, I believe the same. Whatever belief, deity, or philosophy you have in that spot, but when you are born, date on ass. Yes. I got to write that down. Okay. Date so, on ass. D O A, dead on arrival or date on ass. Yeah. I like it. Oh, like yeah. It. That works, doesn't it? Yeah. I like oh, it. It does work. I like it. We hit something there. <laughs> <laughs> Back to rant. I'm angry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Damn it. So these numbers, these things, these it's claiming that this was the deadliest blah 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 is just absolute fiction. It, yeah, it Go back and look. All the flu deaths, by the way, flu, pneumonia, and cold deaths went to zero. Went to zero. Correct. During that year. Mm -hmm. 
were not counted. No cold, flu, or pneumonia deaths. And thousands of those deaths happen every year. So this nonsense just makes me absolutely insane. We watched people, our friend, Hip. Oh, yeah. The turret rat. Yeah. Her father. I was on the phone with her. She was in tears as that damn hospital killed, murdered a good man. And I'm sorry if I brought this up on the air like this, but that makes me so damn mad. I hope I hope I didn't violate any airspace, Hip. I, I'm gathering. You're, you're fine. Probably out there, but yeah. that made me. You have no idea. I cried tears of rage when that happened because there was nothing that I could do. I hate it when that happens. There was nothing that I could do. You were seconds away. That's like the worst fucking feeling. Sitting there and going, there's nothing you can fucking do while this we whole tried. shit. I called the guy down in Texas. He called somebody up in Illinois. We were trying to get an advocate there into the building, but it was too late. Yeah. Um, we actually tried to prevent that one, but all, all the usual things, the remdesivir, the respirator, the whole nine yards, they yeah. were murdering people in the hospital. And they, they told you, you not got to take a $40,000 bounty on your head. And they, they, they literally told you not to take ivermectin, which, in my opinion, when I caught the coof three times, I used it. And for the most part, I was fine. Ivermectin had been tested in human beings and used for viral uh, antivirals. Since 1960. No, no, it wasn't. It was an anti-parasitic. Or anti-parasitic. That Thank also did, was antiviral to a, to an extent. To a degree. But it had been used since the 1960s, and the media called it horse paste. horse paste. Now, listen, the stuff I got via the Green Beret Express, did it come in an animal dispenser? Yes. But the dispenser went by body weight. <laughs> so I just measured out 200 yeah. pounds, there and I go. was fine. Exactly, yeah. and they have a I new ate dog biscuits when I was little. And I'm fine. And listen, they put they put out this new <laughs> pill that's supposed to fight the coof. Yeah, and literally, it's the same mechanism that it, that you get from uh, ivermectin. It just transports yep. extra zinc inside the cells, which it's somehow some kind of biomechanical way, you know, cross wires or short circuits the replication of these viruses. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, but uh, didn't ivermectin win a Nobel P uh, Prize in a certain year? Yes, uh, it did. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it did. I yeah, did, yeah. Don't, don't don't listen to that. You know that's not good for you. Listen yeah. to this. Let's inject more drugs into you. That you know. Yeah, uh, it's a good thing I'm having my mic muted because I'm getting pissed off myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. During the pandemic, patients' deaths were linked to a number of supposed treatments that were given in hospitals. Here we go. The drug remdesivir was so lethal that it was nicknamed Run Death is Near after it started killing th thousands, thousands oh. of COVID patients in the oh. hospital. Thousands, thousands. <laughs> the experts claimed that remdesivir would stop COVID. However, it stopped kidney function. And destroyed liver and other organization, uh, other organs. Now, let me say, uh, you need your liver and you need your kidneys. I'm just, I'm just going to say, without those two things, you are about as dead as dead can be. And it's like if your liver quits working, that that is a horrible way to go. Kidneys, you pretty much, you know, you get weak, you lay down, you go to sleep, and you die in your sleep. I saw a Hanton virus kill a guy in two ID with that. I talked you, about. You that told me about that. To death. Um, that's brutal. That's a brutal, brutal, brutal fucking death. Um, I had forgotten how angry I was with these hospitals until I read this article again. All right. You had a $40,000 bounty on your head and they were collecting. Yes. If you had gone to the hospital during that time, you would have been killed for your scalp basically. Yeah. Now, if you got that bad where they had to put a ventilator on you, I would base basically somebody was drawing a red line through your name. Yeah, that is exactly correct. And look, during the lockdowns here in Michigan, Whitmer, you miserable. Um, long string of expletives here. No threats, FBI. <laughs> Back down in your chair and finish your energy drink. I went out all the time during the lockdowns. It so was freedom for me. I loved it. I love nobody being out there. It was fantastic. I go for walks in the park. I drive around. So did I. I went uh, and staked out a bunch of the hospitals because I saw on the news that bodies oh, were yeah, everywhere. Yeah. We can't cremate enough. Oh, my God. It's so terrible. Nothing. So I staked out the hospitals. Nothing. Nothing. 
Yeah. You did that too? Yes. I was yeah. down at Beaumont. I talked to some people. Listen, my ex-wife. Beaumont uh, North Ascension in Rochester. and yeah. um, Well, my ex-wife yeah, used to work at Beaumont, and I still know people there. Royal Oak. Royal Oak, yeah. yeah. And I talked to some of those people, and they're like, nah. I mean, it, it's somewhat happened. bad, but it's it's kind of like a bad flu Twitter year. Videos. What? That's how they're making the Twitter dance videos. Yeah. Point yeah, is, it's... the activity around those hospitals, well, the entire world is dying. Yeah, it was so terrible that all of these TikTok nurses and doctor videos had to, you know, choreograph all these Re-re- dancing videos because yes. we're we're the front lines of this of this war. Yeah, go fuck yourselves and smurf my balls while you're at it. Yeah, uh, and on top of that, uh, this is from January of this year. Fauci developed selective amnesia during COVID testimony. Admits social distancing wasn't scientific. These things were done for. A couple of reasons, okay? We've discussed the psychological or at, bleh, psychological warfare aspect of a lot of this stuff before. And the, the Alice in Wonderland routine where they make things so weird you're begging for a little hint of reality. Social distancing and lockdowns was conditioning to make you obey. And I saw it. Same thing with the masks. Yeah, same thing with the masks. I saw it in spirit. Spades when you'd go into a store. If you came too close to somebody, they'd freak out. Uh, I went into Meyer without a mask just to see what would happen. Uh huh. One of the workers, a young kid, maybe 19 or 20, in the bakery came flying out of the bakery with his mask on, screaming at me, You have to have a mask. You have to have a mask. It was and physically assaulted me. Oh, wow. It, but it was so funny and so ineffectual because he was like this skinny scarecrow. He was like six feet tall and maybe uh, 110 pounds. I know the type. And his shoving was just completely ineffectual. I just rooted and laughed at him. Well, see, I, I would go into the stores and if they said you got to have a mask, I would say, do you have one? Yeah. And most of the time they'd hand me one. I'd put it on. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I walked past them. I'd literally put it under my chin and continue what I'm doing. And I, if anyone looked at me, I'd put it back up and, and take it back. Because I, I was driving me crazy. I could not breathe. I took a different path in those places where I had to wear a mask, like the hospital yeah, yeah. or somewhere like that. Um, I On the first day they issued the mask mandates, I'm like, I know what I'm doing right away. I made a mask out of cheesecloth and butcher's twine. <laughs> With the little let my people go strings <laughs> and wore that into, I had to register a pistol at that, uh, during that time, walked into the sheriff's office where, wearing that, walked into a couple of different hospitals wearing that just to see what would happen. I would walk in and kind of go, I just need to go into your pharmacy and get something. Oh yeah, yeah, you're fine. We have to take your temperature. But, and I'm wearing this mask that is obviously made of cheesecloth. Yeah. I still have the mask. I kept it as a souvenir obviously made of cheesecloth and they're not saying a word yeah i might as well be wearing a chain link fence on my face well i had one of my uh one of my former soldiers actually i thought you were gonna say a stripper thong would put a diaper on his face (laughs) diaper on his face just to fuck with people (laughs) it was it was beautiful that's good i like that though I Beautiful. like that though. The former instit- the former director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases claimed over 100 times just in the first day of questioning that he could not recall possibly damning information. Nevertheless, what Fauci ultimately willed himself to remember or admit was revelatory. Dr. Fauci, as we all know, was the little skinny shriveled goblin that I would love to stuff into a locker full of tannerite um, in a perfect world of year-round hunting in public beer fountains, FBI. I would I'm not actually going to stick Dr. Fauci in a, in, a, in, a, in a locker. We're not doing that. We're not just talking shit. Silly. We're just talking shit. Be okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Dr. Fauci's transcribed interview revealed systemic failures in our public health system and shed light on serious procedural concerns with our public health authority. It is clear that dissenting opinions were often not considered or surpassed or suppressed completely. Should a future pandemic arise, America's response must be guided by scientific facts and inclusive data. This is the misinformation, disinformation we were talking about. They wanted one narrative, period. And they did not want it questioned, examined, or otherwise contradicted in any way, shape, or form. That's when you know you have Bolshevism. But but here's the thing. Over half the country does not believe this bullshit. 
And the, correct. That would be the half of the country that voted for Trump. Correct. I think it's a lot more than half. I think so too. Once Trump noted after the second day of interviews that Fauci once cast himself as the physical incarnation of science. I remember that. I made a brief video about that when Fauci said, if you question me, you're questioning science. Yeah, that's uh, another attempt to control you with blame, shame, and guilt. Yes. And we are where we are because a lot of people bow down before blame, shame, and guilt. You need to stop that shit. The yep. Center for Disease Control and Prevention stressed in 2020 the need for adults and ch school children to remain six feet, at least six feet apart, suggesting that a failure to space students far apart presented the highest risk. The CDC further recommended the use of face masks where the physical distance of six feet or more could not be maintained, confidently claiming in its guidance that maintaining physical distance of six feet lowers the risk for infection through exposure to rest infectious respiratory droplets and aerosols as though, as if, when you sneeze, that droplet goes, Apah! Oh, six feet. Yeah. Or somebody Correct. can't walk through it or it can't get on something. It's just nonsense. I don't even need to elaborate here. The uh, whole six feet and masks thing was the most obvious insanity I've ever seen in my life. I did get to do a really cool Franken Frankenstein noise to a woman with a shopping cart who panicked in an aisle because I came walking up and I was walking the wrong direction. They had arrows in the aisles. You remember the arrows yeah, in the aisles? Yeah, yeah. I was walking the other way because fuck them. And she comes <laughs> up in the shop because she goes, six feet, six feet, six feet. Like this weird little bird. I went, and, and she literally peeled out in her shopping cart and went running around the corner. And it was remains one of my favorite moments from the lockdowns. Yeah, the little things. The little things. It was glorious. See, one, of the, one of the only interactions that I had with some a-hole during the whole lockdown bullshit and whatnot, because around my area, we really didn't give a fuck. We, yeah. you, you, everybody did what they wanted to do. You know, it, it is what it is. But I went shopping at Walmart. Yeah, you know, shoot me, but I don't shop at Walmart anymore. But I think I went into Walmart for just like one or two things, two simple things. I would have been be in and out in like 10 minutes. I just happened to park my truck and walk up to the, uh, walk up to the doors. And I went, in the exit door. Oh yeah. Ooh. The the entrance door you is you literally. Know you just got it's... five thousand people sick and killed three thousand puppies, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you kill yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I because I walked in the exit door without my mask on, and I kept on walking, and the greeter was like, "Sir, sir, sir, you need to go out and come back in." I turned around and like, I'm already in the fucking store. I'm gonna be in and out in twenty fucking minutes. Kiss my fucking ass. Turned well, around and fucking small. got my shit and got out. Go back, got uh, now, go all back. of those individuals out there who are, you know, going crazy over the masks and the six feet rule, those are the individuals who would have dimed out Anne Frank to the Nazis. You're That's what those people right. are. Damn right. Keep that in the back of your mind, when you deal with them in the future, they will fucking drop a dime on you so fast for absolutely nothing. Do not trust them. Do not let them around you on the regular. They are an anchor. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.